Welcome to the Ranjit Kumar Show. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel and press the bell icon for more amazing videos. Connect me via WhatsApp plus 923337207616. Have you ever wondered how our personality develops over time? This question was at the heart of Eric Erickson's work, an ego psychologist who crafted one of the most influential theories of development. Drawing from the work of Sigmund Freud, Erickson shifted the focus to psychosocial development, emphasizing the impact of social experiences across our lifespan. Unlike Freud's psychosexual stages, Erickson's theory delves into how our interactions and relationships shape us as we grow. Erickson proposed the epigenetic principle, suggesting that our growth unfolds in a sequence over time and within the context of our community. Each stage of this journey presents a conflict, a turning point in our development. These conflicts Erickson believed revolve around developing a psychological quality or failing to do so. The stakes are high, with the potential for both personal growth and failure. Now let's delve into the eight stages that make up Erickson's theory. The first stage of Erickson's theory occurs between birth and one year of age. This stage presents a critical conflict that Erickson refers to as trust versus mistrust. At this tender age, the child is entirely reliant on caregivers for everything, from nourishment to comfort and safety. The quality of caregiving becomes the basis for the infant's understanding of trust. If the caregivers are consistent, reliable and affectionate, the child develops a sense of trust and security. They begin to believe the world is a safe place where their needs will be met. Conversely, if the caregivers are inconsistent, emotionally unavailable or rejecting, the child develops a sense of mistrust. They may view the world as unpredictable and unsafe. This stage sets the foundation for future relationships. Trust established early on fosters confidence, while mistrust can lead to fear of the world and its inhabitants. The outcome of this stage significantly impacts a person's ability to trust others throughout life. Moving on to the toddler years, we encounter the second stage. As toddlers, children begin to explore the world around them, leading to a conflict known as autonomy versus shame and doubt. In this stage, the child's world extends beyond the comforting arms of their caregivers. With this newfound independence, they start to make choices about what they eat, what they wear, and how they play. The crux of this stage is the toddler's desire to do things on their own, a natural part of their growing autonomy. However, not all attempts at independence will be successful. When efforts are thwarted, either by limitations in their abilities or by overprotective caregivers, feelings of shame and doubt can creep in. This stage is a balancing act between the child's growing desire for independence and their need for guidance and protection. Successfully navigating this stage leads to a sense of self-confidence, whereas failure may result in feelings of shame and doubt. As children enter preschool, they reach the third stage, the conflict of initiative versus guilt. Here, curiosity takes the driver's seat, and the world becomes a playground of discovery. Children start to assert control and power over their environment. They ask a multitude of questions, eager to understand the why and how of everything. At this stage, it's all about taking the initiative. Children want to do things independently, to accomplish tasks, and to make decisions. But with this newfound autonomy also comes the potential for guilt. When children overstep boundaries or make mistakes, they may experience feelings of guilt. The key to navigating this stage is finding balance. By encouraging initiative and gently guiding children when they err, we can help them develop a sense of purpose. This stage plays a critical role in developing the ability to initiate and direct actions, which is a skill they'll carry into adulthood. Moving into the middle school years, we encounter the fourth stage. Here, the conflict of industry versus inferiority takes center stage. This phase is a critical juncture in a child's life as they grapple with new social and academic demands. It's a time when they start comparing themselves with their peers, often questioning their abilities and worth. During this stage, children are learning to make things, use tools, and acquire the skills for participating in the adult world. They begin to develop a sense of pride in their accomplishments and abilities. It's a time of burgeoning self-confidence, but it can also be a time of self-doubt. If children are encouraged and reinforced for their initiative, they begin to feel industrious, developing a sense of competence and belief in their skills. However, if this initiative is not encouraged, if it's restricted by parents or teachers, then the child begins to feel inferior, doubting their abilities and therefore may not reach their potential. 
Success leads to a sense of competence, while failure results in feelings of inferiority. Entering adolescence, individuals come to the fifth stage, the conflict of identity versus confusion. Here teenagers are actively exploring their independence and developing a sense of self. During this pivotal period, they start to form strong affiliations and begin to understand their own identity based on the outcome of their explorations. This stage is characterized by a flurry of questions, often centered around who they are and what they want to become. It's a time of discovery, experimentation and self-expression. They grapple with their sense of self, their values and their beliefs. However, it's not always a smooth ride. Confusion can creep in, leaving some feeling lost or unsure of where they fit in the world. This can lead to a weak sense of self, an unclear understanding of their place in society. Successfully navigating this stage leads to an established identity, while failure results in role confusion and a weak sense of self. As we become young adults, we enter the sixth stage, intimacy versus isolation. This stage, which spans from 18 to 40 years, is where we begin to explore close personal relationships. The challenge here is to form lasting, meaningful bonds with others. These connections could be friendships, romantic relationships, or even deep platonic bonds. Erickson believed that in order to grow, we need to learn how to love and be loved. It's about finding that special connection with someone and sharing our life experiences with them. It's about vulnerability and trust. However, it's not always a smooth ride. The fear of commitment and the fear of being alone are both real struggles. If we're unable to establish these intimate connections, we risk feeling isolated and lonely. This can lead to depression and a sense of stagnation in life. Success in this stage leads to strong relationships, while failure might result in loneliness and isolation. As we reach middle age, we encounter the seventh stage. Here we grapple with the conflict of generativity versus stagnation. It's a time when adults need to create or nurture things that will outlast them, essentially making a positive mark on the world through caring for others, producing goods or creating services. This stage is all about contributing to the betterment of society and future generations, and it's often realized through parenthood or meaningful work. Those successful in navigating this conflict feel they are leaving their mark on the world, be it through their children, their work, or other meaningful contributions. On the other hand, those who fail to attain this sense of legacy can feel stagnant and unproductive, experiencing a deep sense of stagnation and personal impoverishment. They may struggle to find purpose and feel disconnected or uninvolved with their community or society. Success leads to feelings of usefulness and accomplishment, while failure results in shallow involvement in the world. As we grow older, we reach the final stage. This is the stage of integrity versus despair a juncture Ericsson believed to be critical in one's twilight years. It's a time for reflection, a time for us to look back on the life we've lived. The question we ask ourselves here is, have I lived a full and satisfying life, or is there a chasm of regret? In this stage, we either attain wisdom from a life well lived, or despair over time misspent. The challenge lies in coming to terms with our past, our choices, and ultimately, our life. This is not about grand accomplishments, but about finding personal satisfaction in the life we've led, the relationships we've nurtured, and the love we've given and received. Success in this stage means arriving at a sense of integrity, a sense of coherence and wholeness, and a realization that our life has been meaningful and worthwhile. Success at this stage leads to feelings of wisdom, while failure results in regret, bitterness and despair. So we have traveled through the eight stages of Ericsson's theory, from trust versus mistrust in infancy to integrity versus despair in old age, we've seen how Ericsson believed our personalities evolve. Each stage represents a struggle, a delicate balance between two opposing outcomes. When navigated successfully, these stages bestow us with strengths that bolster our sense of self and our ability to navigate the world around us. However, failure to effectively negotiate these stages can lead to a sense of inadequacy and stunted personal growth. It's crucial to remember, though, that Ericsson believed these stages were not set in stone. We are not doomed by our past, but rather, we have the capacity for growth and change throughout our lives. Remember, Ericsson's theory reminds us of the lifelong journey of personality development and the importance of social experiences in shaping who we become.